If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Micah Yu, board certified rheumatologist, and in this channel, we talk about rheumatology, autoimmune disease, and integrative medicine. If you or someone you know has rheumatoid arthritis and you've always wondered what the difference is between seronegative and seropositive rheumatoid arthritis, then this video is for you. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between seronegative rheumatoid arthritis and seropositive rheumatoid arthritis. We're going to be talking about the prognosis for both of them. Is one more aggressive than the other? We're also going to be talking about the treatments. Are the treatments different between seronegative rheumatoid arthritis and seropositive rheumatoid arthritis? And also, do you think that your doctor has misdiagnosed you with seronegative rheumatoid arthritis? when you could in fact have other potential diagnoses. So we're gonna talk about other potential diagnoses that can mimic seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. And if you learned something from this video or you like the content, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. So you or someone you know has just been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, but how does a rheumatologist know whether someone actually has seronegative rheumatoid arthritis or seropositive rheumatoid arthritis. First of all, how does a patient even get diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis? What are the signs and symptoms? Well, I'm gonna briefly talk about it here, but you can definitely go to my video that I talk about for rheumatoid arthritis that I posted many months ago. How do we even diagnose rheumatoid arthritis? And what is it? Well, if you go to the video here that I posted many months ago, I explain what rheumatoid arthritis is and how we diagnose rheumatoid arthritis. But I'll briefly talk about the ways we diagnose it here. So for rheumatoid arthritis, we typically look for pattern of symptoms, joint pain, and swelling. And the pattern of the joint pain can be from head to toe. You can get pain in your shoulders, elbows, hands, feet, and knees, and sometimes even the TMJs as well. And we're looking for a symmetrical joint pain. So for example, if my second finger hurts, I am looking for pain on the other second digit of the other hand. That's simply what we see, but of course not every patient is going to be a textbook case. So there are variations to this, but that's some of the things we look for. Other things we look for in rheumatoid arthritis is swelling of the joints. So when your rheumatologist presses your joints or they look at you on the screen, if you're doing telemedicine, then we're looking for bogginess or some inflammation there, some redness of the joint and warmth as well. Now, it can be very, very frustrating when you're having all this joint pain and inflammation when you're home, going on your day-to-day -day activities. And then all of a sudden you go to the rheumatologist and somehow your joint pain suddenly disappears or your joint swelling disappears. Don't worry, that does happen to my patients as well and they come to my clinic and really I base it off the clinical history and as they come to my clinic over time, I get to examine the joints over time, I will look at their labs as well and that will let me get a better idea whether they truly have rheumatoid arthritis or not. Not only do I look at my patient's joints and get a sense from their clinical history, but also labs and x-rays are very important. And that leads me into my second part is what is the difference between seronegative and seropositive rheumatoid arthritis? Seronegative rheumatoid arthritis and seropositive rheumatoid arthritis are both rheumatoid arthritis. The treatment is exactly the same. The biggest difference between them is that for seropositive rheumatoid arthritis, we have the autoantibodies that are positive on the blood test. So some of them include rheumatoid factor, CCP antibodies, and also there's another one that your doctor may or may not get, and that's anti-CARP, that's C-A-R-P. If any of these three antibodies are positive, I will go on to call my patient seropositive rheumatoid arthritis. If all of these are negative, then I will call my patient seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. Now, there may be antibodies that are developed and discovered several years down the road, 20 years, 30 years. Right now, we don't have the technology to detect every single antibody out there in the world for rheumatoid arthritis. Seropositive rheumatoid arthritis is the more common rheumatoid arthritis. About 60 to 80% of rheumatoid arthritis patients will have seropositivity. What else is the difference between seropositive rheumatoid arthritis and seronegative rheumatoid arthritis? Well, is it more aggressive? So seropositive rheumatoid arthritis patients 
typically have more manifestations of lung involvement from the rheumatoid arthritis. So rheumatoid arthritis patients can get something called interstitial lung disease where the lungs are inflamed and potentially get scarred from inflammation. And that tends to occur more in seropositive rheumatoid arthritis patients. Also for seropositive RA patients, they can have a higher likelihood of having nodules, which are lumps potentially under the skin or near the joints. There can be a higher chance of having vasculitis as well, which is inflammation of the vessels, which can cause rashes and other manifestations. And you must be wondering, is seronegative rheumatoid arthritis less aggressive or does it need less treatment than someone that has seropositive rheumatoid arthritis? And the answer is no. For seronegative rheumatoid arthritis, we still use the intensity of medication. So we still use disease modifying medications such as called DMARDs, such as methotrexate, sulfasalazine, plaquenil or leflunamide and we also use biologics such as Humira and Embryl for both of them so even though seropositive rheumatoid arthritis patients could have involvement more likelihood of involvement in other parts of the body the intensity of the treatment is still the same so for seronegative rheumatoid arthritis it's a pretty straightforward diagnosis your antibodies are positive your joint pains there your swellings there but is seronegative truly seronegative arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis all the time. In some cases, patients can be misdiagnosed because all your antibodies are negative. So it's much trickier for a doctor to diagnose a patient. So sometimes seronegative rheumatoid arthritis patients could have psoriatic arthritis. They could have gout. They can have pseudogout. They could have polymyalgia rheumatica, or they could have arthritis from cancer that's not even being detected at that time. So patients can have lymphoma, leukemia, breast cancer that can manifest itself as arthritis and that does happen and that can be overlooked because sometimes the patients haven't been diagnosed with cancer yet and sometimes that can be very tricky. Also, some patients have out of control thyroid problems and that can also manifest itself as arthritis in the joints of the hands, the feet. So really, we gotta make sure the patient doesn't have thyroid issues and sometimes that can be overlooked as well. And if a patient does have inflammatory bowel disease, then sometimes the patients might be not misdiagnosed or the inflammatory bowel disease hasn't been diagnosed yet and the patient does have symptoms and the doctor ends up diagnosed with several negative rheumatoid arthritis when in fact they can have another type of arthritis, something such as spondyloarthritis. So as you can see, there are so many potential diagnoses for seronegative rheumatoid arthritis when it's not really seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. Usually all these different diagnoses are running through my head as I'm evaluating a patient for joint pain and potential rheumatoid arthritis. So it's not that easy or straightforward in rheumatology. So to summarize, we have talked about what the difference is between seronegative rheumatoid arthritis and seropositive rheumatoid arthritis. We've also talked about the different manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis and the prognosis between seronegative and seropositive rheumatoid arthritis. We've also discussed on the mimickers of seronegative rheumatoid arthritis and how they can be overlooked and misdiagnosed. So pay attention to that. And also, we've discussed whether the treatments are different between seronegative and seropositive rheumatoid arthritis. So if you missed something, please go back and watch the video closer as I discuss all these different topics. If you enjoy watching this video and you learn a thing or two about rheumatoid arthritis, don't forget to hit the like button and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you continue supporting this channel and you can stay up to date on all the new videos I will produce. And if you do want to see me in my clinic, I do see patients virtually and in person throughout the USA. So please go to www.drlifestyle.org, which I'll post below in the comment section and in the details. See you guys next time.